McDonald's price discrimination. In this small city state of Singapore, a major financial hub, a thriving economy, and a metropolis, an unusual phenomenon was uncovered. It was anything but economic, irrational at worst. Before Lim Po Seng's letter to the Straits Times Forum, dated 22nd December 2019, on the price differential between a mad chicken in its outlet at Lucky Plaza costing $3.95 and its Toapayos costing $2. I'd like to direct you to an earlier, if not more comprehensive, price comparison by Eugenia Liu in Money Smart dated 24th January 2019 entitled, Did you know that McDonald's charges you different prices at different outlets? Although this smacks of unethical business behavior, especially when the outlets are barely six kilometers apart, that is, taking the Torpayo and Lucky Plaza outlets as a case in point, and quite literally, takes place under the consumer's noses. I would not place the blame squarely on McDonald's. However, first, let me qualify that I'm not a food fan of McDonald's, or for that matter, the fast food chain, which puts me in that category of public members who are indifferent to whatever prices McDonald's charges. That said, I must admit that I'm still a fan of McDonald's business model and have always been inspired by its very successful business strategies. Under laser fair conditions and Singapore being a free market, such a PD should never have happened and even if it does, should never have persisted for any length of time. For purpose of this presentation and ease of comparison, we shall solely focus on the Mac Chicken and the TP and LP outlets as a microcosm, if you will, of the greater disparity among the outlets across the island. Let's use the price difference of a mad chicken between LP and TP as a case in point. To recap, please refer to the below table for the price of a mad chicken. Two different outlets source from Straits Times dated 22nd December 2019. Forum letter from Limpo Singh. Necessary conditions for successful price discrimination. In order to explain my stance above, let's revisit Economics 101. The cookie cutter conditions stipulated in most reference books for successful third degree price discrimination are as follows. Price discrimination can only occur if certain conditions are met. 1. The firm must be able to identify different market segments. A mac chicken is a homogeneous product and the service quality of McDonald's counter crew is consistent across all its outlets. For all intents and purposes, a mac chicken bought from LP is the same as one bought from TP as far as non-price factors are concerned. Not applicable. Granted, there are more tourist patrons at LP, but as most locals and foreign domestic workers are fairly mobile between TP and LP, this is a moot point.
point. Secondly, different segments must have different price elasticities. To a limited extent, if one argues that patrons at LP have higher purchasing power, where they are indifferent to $2 or $3.95 and are bigger spenders than patrons at TP. But this is offset by the large crowd of foreign domestic workers who gather in LP on their off days. Likewise, tourists are also flocking beyond the traditional orchard belt to suburban area with easy transport access. Thirdly, markets must be kept separate. Time, physical distance and nature of use. Not applicable. Time, separated by a 10 minute by MRT to 15 minute distance by vehicle. Physical distance, about 6 kilometers away, easy access. Nature of use, perishable, but with a proper food warmer. 15 minutes to 30 minutes delay in food consumption is well within acceptable food hygiene standards. Fourthly, there must be no seepage between the two markets, which means that a consumer cannot purchase at a low price in the elastic sub-market and then resell to other consumers in the inelastic sub-market at a higher price. This condition is a non-starter for a small city-state like Singapore. Singapore has one of the freest economies and also one of the friendliest environments around the world. There is a perfect mobility of consumers between TP and LP. Fifthly, the firm must have some form of monopoly power. Yes, McDonald's has a strong franchise and is iconic among the young and not so young. Having established itself as a fast food chain for many decades. Hence, out of the above five conditions for PD to work effectively, only the last one is perhaps relevant. Nevertheless, why is PD still alive and well for so many years in the McDonald's experience? As you can see from the map between TP and LP, the distance is hardly 6 kilometers away and it takes a van less than 12 minutes to commute between the two places. Under normal circumstances, assuming rational consumer and entrepreneur's behavior, an arbitraging opportunity is clearly pleasant here. One could easily buy, say, 50 Mac chicken at $1.95 each from TP and on deliver sell it at $3.95 per piece at LP. He can engage GoGo Van which charges about $12 per trip or other transport services such as Grab Hitch, Ride, Gojek in a fiercely competitive ride healing industry and thus prices are kept low if driving a private vehicle proves not cost effective. But clearly this is not happening. The big question is, despite all the factors present for arbitraging to take place, there is something unusual 
about the business consumer behavior here, which has not seen this taking place. I've examined the possible following reasons, but none could simply explain this lack of price arbitrage. One, government regulations. To the best of my knowledge, this can be construed as a private arrangement in which someone is running an errand for you to get the Mac chicken from TP and deliver it to LP. With modern communications, coordination between order taking and pickup is the list of problems. Perceived regulations? Could it be that despite Singapore being touted as a business-friendly environment, the reality is quite different on the ground for the local citizens? I'm referring to the men in the street, the gigs, the freelancers, the unemployed, the low-income strata, who will no doubt seize any opportunity to eke out a living. If that was so, perhaps the government can review its policies, or more aptly, the communication of its policies to manage the public's perception that policies are humongous, that cure away any spirit of entrepreneurship. Further, economists can perhaps insert this addendum to the conditions for PD, since behavioural sciences are part and parcel of economic theories. 2. Difficult to find a parking space in the congested Orchard Road area? A valid concern, but not insurmountable. One can find some space behind LP or station somewhere within 200 metres radius to deliver the food. 3. Margin is not worth the effort and hassle. But if you work out 100 pieces at $1.95 per piece equals $195 minus delivery charges plus petrol and other miscellaneous costs equals $50. Net margin equals 195 minus 50 equals $145 per trip and probably a two hours job. That works out to about $70 per hour. Not a bad deal compared with taxi driving, ride healing and other delivery jobs. Fourthly, legal consideration. Mac cannot place a restriction for reselling of its products because it is subject to fair market practice in the first place. The Competition and Consumer Association of Singapore will step in should this be the case. Hence, none of the reasons could justifiably point to a case of continued price discriminating monopoly pricing power exercised by McDonald's unless we are not behaving rationally. In my view, this is an acnema which goes against the established theories of third-degree PD and warrants a fresh review of the assumptions in a modern-day context. However, before I jump the gun to write to economists and publishers, I'm going to put forth the above challenge for anyone to arbitrage the price differential between TP and LP, which under normal market circumstances should have taken place long ago. Try my above business proposal and see if it will bring about some price changes. For sure, it is toilsome and hard work, but within weeks, if I'm wrong about PD conditions not working out 
as they should. You're going to see McDonald's straightening up its prices. You're going to be the talk of the town. Now, how is that for a deal? For the less stout-hearted, here's another simpler initiative for you. Do your math. Buy from the cheaper outlets, shun the costlier outlets. Over time, the natural forces of supply and demand will self-correct the anomaly and restore to an equilibrium price, which should reflect what you as a consumer is prepared to pay for a Mac chicken, be it from TP or LP. In the event that this market anomaly still persists, then we have a case for the economists to rewrite their price discrimination third degree conditions, haven't we? Thank you.